Now, number 49, I feel like to go over 49, we really need to review matrix, uh, matrices and multiplication quickly. So we know with matrices that we always have rows by columns and rows by columns. Now, one of the important things is that when we're multiplying matrices, the number of columns and rows are always going to be the same. That's the first rule. They have to be the same. And I'll write that. And then the other rule is that when you multiply matrices, it takes on the outside dimensions of the first row and the last column. Now, to give you an example, if we have a company where we have, let's just say, owners, we have managers, and we have employees, and we have two owners. Let's say we have four managers and 30 employees. And we're going to pay them all different amounts of money. The owners will get $125,000. The managers will each get paid $80,000. And the employees will each get paid, let's just say, $50,000. Now, this would kind of make sense considering, I'll put the little money signs in here, we have a three by three. I'm sorry, whoops, take that back. I'm sorry, one by three, right? We have one row and three columns. And here we have three columns and one row. So here we know we can multiply because the threes add up. If we were to multiply these, it would be two times 125,000 plus four times 80,000 plus 30 times 50,000. And that would show us what the product of these matrices are, it would be one value. And that one value that we have would be the total income of all the people that work for the company. Now, there could be a scenario where, let's just say I have a company, but I have a New York location, and then I have a California location. In my California location, I only have one owner, maybe two managers and 10 employees, but I still pay them the same amount. Now I have a two by three and a three still by one, and I can still multiply these two. If I multiply them, I'll have a two by one. I'll have all of the pay I have in New York and all the pay I have in California. Now, why am I telling you all this? Well, look what happens if we do this. If I put another one here, 30,000, well then who makes 30,000? No one does. Therefore, we can't multiply these because now it would be a three by four. This whole problem is all about whether you can multiply matrices. Now, let's take a look at the answers here. So, we have matrix A. And that's m by n. We have matrix B, and that's going to be n by p. Notice the insides match up. So we could multiply a times b. That would work. We also know that when we multiply them, that the outcome is going to have dimension, dimensions rather of m by p when we multiply these. When we have the product of those. So let's go through the answers here. Which of the following statements must be true? The product BA does not exist. Well, if I flip these around and I make it B, which is P by N, and here I have M by N, we can see here that the insides don't match up and there is no product. So that's actually true. It's true that there's not a product of B times A. The product AB exists and has dimensions M by P. Well, we know we multiply a by p, um, a by b, we get the two n's to match up. We have dimensions m by p in the outcome, and that's our product, so that's true as well. The product a, b exists and has dimensions n by n. That's not true. As we mentioned, we multiply matrices, the outside dimensions will be in the product, so that's not true. So the answer is going to be d, 1 and 2.